You gonna have any fights this week? Oh man, we gotta have some fights. Episode of the cage match. I am the old Savage with me. Huh? I said another one. How many have we another had now? One. This is uh, 36, I believe. 36. Is that the number? Or because I think we have more than that. Well, this this is the Wednesday number, you know? Okay, okay, okay. That's right, because this is this is 36A. Yes. 36A starting from the beginning of last this past season. And uh, here we are, here we go, let's go, here we go, everybody, yes! All right, and uh, like I said, I am the Oakland Savage, and with me always is the man who's been on every single episode to date. Speaking with Hal Rippin Jr. himself. I'll tell you about that when we're off cameras. <laughs> Cal Ripken Jr. himself. <laughs> Asylum, Asylum, how are you doing? I'm doing good, as good as I could for not having fucking football. We got news, know, but no football. It's just a tease out there, man. It's a tease out there. We have to still wait. It is, uh, uh, what, what, what day is it? Today is March 27th. Football season starts preseasons in August. So March, April, that's a long May, time. June, July. Yeah. yeah, it's a fucking long time. Yeah, it's a long time. It's a long time. But. You got OTAs and shit like that that start coming up that will kind of give you know give you that fix for fucking thirty seconds and shit you know that weak weed kind of shit <laughs> get you high you know before, just oh, long enough to get the munchies. It's just a football bammer. <laughs> <laughs> to all those who know what that means. All right, uh, before we get into the show, it is our favorite segment, shameless plug. Here we go. You gonna put the graphic up? Oh, there you go. Hey, never mind. I'm just slow. Hey, okay. Go to the YouTube channel, The Cage Match Show. Uh, like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. If you don't do YouTube, go to Oakland Raiders Savage page, or you go to Asylum page on Facebook. On Facebook, sorry, on Facebook. Then like, share, give stars if that's what you're into, and don't forget to go to W G G. Uh, and check out W if you want energy. Put in cage match, one word, in the uh, box when you're checking out to get 10% off. 10% off discount. When you think of wins, you think of dubs. And when you think of dubs, think, think of, of w. w. Energy w. that you need 
to compete with guys like Max Crosby, as AP would say. All and, right. And Crosby does that shit naturally. I mean, that 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 that's a freaking amazing. I wish I had that energy again. <laughs> I was like, again, yeah, I used to. I uh, used to. Yeah, I but used then, to. Word. But then life, you know, hits hard. All right. Before <laughs> we go keeps, in. Life is uh, that shot, and then it's all over. Oh, wait. That's the wrong part of life. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, my God. I got shot twice. Okay. Hey, I didn't realize we are doing the show from the hood. Hey, you know, still represent like Oakland. Still represent Oakland over here. All <laughs> right. Now, before we go into our topics of oh, the league. Okay. Thank you, Elise. Elise, yes. Sorry. I think W has a BOGO right now. Buy one, get one free. Oh, wow. We knew that, right? Yes, we did. <laughs> but she put it out there for us because, you know what? She's our on the streets reporter. Yes. She is our uh, tech. Street tech, street tech, street. I don't know. Uh, but before we go I into to <laughs> before we go into the show, though, let's uh, let's go around the nation because we have a special announcement. Here we go. All right, everybody. Now, the next thing we have is the draft. But right after the draft, we have May 11th. Oh, wait, let's let's switch this around. Let's take, let's take this down real quick because I have this right here. Oh, right there. Tickets at Summer Kickoff 2024.eventbrite.com. May 11th, Kern County Fairgrounds, Bakersfield, California. Lorenzo Lerma, 10th year anniversary. Ten, he, he's, this is his 10th one. This is the Raider I Nation. I, at, I, I might have been at his first one because 2014 was when I started all this with Asylum. And uh, I think I was at his first kickoff. I didn't realize it was his first at the time. Wow. Well, 10 years, man. 10 years. That, that, hey, to be doing it for that long, that's impressive. That is impressive. <clears throat> yes, I went to uh, I went to the one. It was in 2022. Uh, me and my girlfriend and my stepson, we went to that one. Um, that was pretty cool. It was my first one, my first one. Um, and it was hot that day. Well, it was a little bit, it was a little hot that day, Bakersfield. Uh, uh it, it was hot the day I went, and I'm wearing a big old thick straight jacket. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun though. I mean, he's got beer, you know, all that shit. He, he, he knows what he's doing. He has events. I mean, he ain't had this many signings as you're seeing on the screen right now, but you know, he always has signings and, 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 uh, there's people selling. I mean, I got it's where I got my, uh, Townsend autograph at Greg Townsend was out there. I mean, you'd be out there for this one. Now you will. I mean, I'm telling you it, if you could go, go and go, go at least once. It, it was a blast. I wish, I wish I was back out there and being able to do more of these. His is an event that, uh, it, it is worth it. And uh, if you could hit him up and find out because he even has a discount uh, for the hotels if you wanted to stay the night in the hotels out there. Yeah, and I mean, Raider Nation Summer Kickoff, this basically kicks off all the Raider uh, Nation events out there around the nation, oh, around America, the actual nation. Not just Raider Nation, but the actual nation. Um, and like you see here in the flyer, I got, uh, legends like Ira Matthews, Greg Townsend, Jeff Barnes, uh, Mike Ciani, uh, guys like these. And Reggie of King course, Law. and of course, Tom Flores, Hall of Famer. Um, he had, a, he just had a birthday on the same day as my mom's May, May, March 21st. <laughs> oh yeah. Good. Screw up your mom's birthday. See how quickly you'd be on the show. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you know, I see my mom shares a birthday with Tom Flores. Hall of Fame coach, I share a birthday with um, Vince Lombardi, June 11th. So, we're just... I share with... a birthday with Cliff Branch. You do? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, see? And we Sparkle Raider. Are... And, we are... and Sparkle Raider. We are legends. 
Legend. <laughs> Legends in our own minds. Legends yeah, baby. in our own mind right there. And like we had the banner for this one. Tickets at Summer Kickoff 2024.eventbrite.com. May 11th, wow. Kern County Fairgrounds, Bakersfield, California. But, but. but there's something special the going on here. Uh, here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Now, between now and next Wednesday, if you share, if you, we'll put it on our pages, uh, and you get off Lorenzo's pages, if you share Lorenzo's flyers between now and next Wednesday, and tag either Asylum, Oakland Raider Savage, or Lorenzo Lerma in it, you get entered into a drawing for a pair of VIP black hole section tickets, which will be drawn on next week's show. Live here on next week's show, Lorenzo will draw the winner for people who have shared a flyer, one of Lorenzo's flyers, and tag either Asylum, Oakland Raider Savage, or Lorenzo Lerma for an entry to win those tickets. That is two black hole. What is it? Two black hole uh, VIP two black tickets. Hole section. He's broken it up into different sections this year. At the count at the fairgrounds. At the fairgrounds. So mm -hmm. there, there's a black hole section. I think it has to do with with uh, surrounding the stage or something. I'm not exactly 100. percent He will be on next week, hopefully. Uh, would to, well, he has to if he's going to draw the tickets. Uh, <laughs> to better explain that aspect, but yeah. In the black hole section, a pair of VIP tickets. You can't pass that up. You gotta at least just share the flyer. I mean, share the flyer, tag up one of us in it, and you have a chance to go for free and a chance to possibly get some autographs. I, I know the uh, you gotta have tickets for the autographs. He has those for sale. You go to the summer kickoff 2024 event right .com to get those. Right down there. And you get and I know this one for a fact. You get one ticket, and you get every autograph on that list. Not just one autograph. Everybody there, that's there to sign autographs, one ticket, you get them all. You better bring your flag, bring your hat, bring your jersey, bring your uh, uh, books, whatever you have. Get them signed. Bring by these legends. Child, make more something. Yeah, you know, shave your head. <laughs> get it signed, like, you know, ball not, hey. Bald nod. All right. Oh, uh, <laughs> tattoo it on later. <laughs> hey, some of them I wouldn't mind doing. Hey, so make sure you do that. Like Asylum said, tag Asylum, tag Oakland Raider Savage, tag Lorenzo Lerma into the Flyers on Facebook. On fa is it Facebook and Instagram or just Facebook? Or does it matter? As long as uh, he, he, gets he, he, he didn't say which one, so. Let's just say on, on We'll Facebook. say on Facebook. We'll say on yes. Facebook. What? 50, 50 hours. Raider 7. What's up? Oh, yeah, brother. 25 yeah. hours? 20, 50 hours? Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, yeah. All right. Hey, know. hey, hey, hey. He's on the show. <laughs> Salute to you, brother. Salute to you, brother. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, look, now. Hey, apparently, somebody who watches says he got, look, it ain't 36. It's almost 40. And actually, to be honest with you, I think it's over 40. I think it's more like 46. Well, yeah, well, I mean, look at Kate, our standard Wednesday slot, 46, Okay, I mean, 36. We're trying to be, you know, what's that, what's the, you know, subtle and humble, okay? That's what we're trying to do. Big words here, subtle and humble. And you lost it. Huh? Oh. Yes. I don't know. Okay. I, I, hey, I graduated with a public education, so Ooh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. I got three minutes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> On to the news. What is what kind of <laughs> miscount is that? Don't let Asylum count the money. <laughs> <clears throat> We're doing core math here, okay, everybody. Core math is the subject. It's All insane. right, actually, core math. There we go. All right, going into our wait. Which which should we keep the W up or should we? No, W's up there. So W's up there. Yeah. We have, we're going to keep a Lorenzo's down there to get to Yeah, okay, all right. It's 46 episodes. I know what I'm talking about. We Why, got 46 really? videos. I know what I'm talking about. God damn it. I counted everything. Okay, you know what? Let's go into the news, but I'll do it this way right here. Follow me on this one. Follow me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm gonna quarterback this part of the show right here. Now, everybody, Omaha, Omaha, <laughs> everybody, let's go back in time. Do you remember this play? Play of the game in regulation. It is caught by Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle. And the Rams have won the Super Bowl. Now, that game-winning Super Bowl tackle by ex-Raider, former Raider, Mike Jones, is now can be banned and flagged for a 15-yarder. Asylum, hold on, let's get this ready over here. Let's get this ready over here. Asylum, how do you feel about this new rule that they, in the Orlando meetings, decided, and this was unanimous, decided to ban this quote-unquote hip drop slash uh, swivel tackle? They don't even have a name, a real name for it or whatever. How do you feel about this? I'm kind of torn in this one because, I mean, I do understand the safety of the players and what they're trying to do. And there are specific tackles that fall in this category where I could agree with the rule. That being said, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan here early on because there's a lot of tackles. And I know you got things to show. I see. Here we go. We're going to start this. This is the this is the play that really started that rule going uh and there i can understand the rule but there's so many other plays that i feel are going to get flagged for this being called this that's going to affect the game that it's it's not going to qualify we need a not such a broad spectrum on this we need a black and white down to the detailed rule on what and I get they're going here. Grab a runner with both hands, wraps a runner around with both arms, and unweights himself by swiveling and dropping. What are you going to consider a swivel and a drop when you're in the middle of a tackle and momentum is taking you? And a ref thinks, I mean, you already got PI calls that aren't PI. You've got holding calls that aren't holding calls. You got calls that ain't being made. And then you're going to have quarterbacks such as. Patrick Mahomes, that every time he gets cat tackled, he's going to claim it was a hit drop and, you know, he's going to want a flag. He already does that every time he throws the ball. It's not caught. It was automatic pass interference. This, <laughs> this reminds me of one of those. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the, uh, I mean, I'm going by how the referee is going to see it. It's kind of like that um, that tuck rule, where the court, the the referee has to determine intent. Now I know this is not this is a totally different thing, but it, it's like the 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 referee has to determine if that was in, in real time, if that was a hip, you know that the uh, the 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 hip drop tackle, swivel tackle, whatever, 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 and yeah, like you like you said. How do you, how exactly are you, and you know what it's, you know, it's to kind of remind me of, it's like that, uh, like the, the, uh, complete catch, the complete catch, a uh, rule that they kept debating. Did he have possession all the way down? Yes. That one, that, the, uh, the, 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 the complete, uh, was that terrible? No, that, that, that was, uh, Des Bryant. That's who Yes. Was. That was a Des Bryant rule. Uh, let me take this down. So that's what reminds me of that. But you know, it's funny because I know we're going to think of history. Going back in time, when I when I seen the linebacker for the um for the Bengals on this one, it remind me of this play right here. Now we all remember Bo Jackson and the the tackle that basically ended his football career. Would you consider this something too. like that? <laughs> but there was no hip drop. There was no swivel. I mean, that was clearly not in that. But who's to say? That doesn't get called. Yeah. You know, who's to say because, he, you know, the way he fell on his legs, that doesn't get called. That's it's almost it's it's believe it or not. It's kind of similar to the Tom Brady rule. Where you, when if, if you, you hit a, a knees, it's okay, there it goes. Flat. 
You froze for a second. I had to fill in the gap. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Now you froze on my end, so I was filling in the gap. I don't know. It's probably me. It's okay. I fuck everything up. It's all good. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it, like I said, it's, it's kind of like the Tom Brady rule about falling at his knees. I mean, that's another call that Kermit the Frog always fucking goes. He's, he's falling at my knees. He's trying to tackle you. No, he's falling at my knees. Now, that there, I call a hit drop. That there is a it is one that you can turn around and call There's a, a college play. Look at this one. Oh, look at that. The leg is dislocated. Oh, my God. There's, be speaking of. He's touching me. He's touching me. <laughs> you know, that play there, I don't think is, is one. You know, here, I mean, that's just part of the of tackling. But, you know, as, as Al says, you know. This is a uh, result of that there it might be, you know. There. Yeah, oh, there, he swivels yeah. the hip, he kicks his legs out. There I could see it being a penalty. That clearly could be a penalty. But all these other ones that are in depth, and you know, we you know you can't trust the refs. I mean, <laughs> these guys here can't be trusted to make the right call 90% of the time. I mean, just the this face alone just says, come on, Raider. Come on, Raider. You know, Make your Raider tackle. You know, Max Crosby gets held how much? Blatant in front of fucking a ref and does it get called? Definitely not when they're playing the Chiefs. Oh, no. They never call that. And he even knows that. He goes, I already know I'm getting held. They ain't going to throw the flag on that one. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, it all, like, like we said, it all started from this one right here. And this is the one that started the debate throughout the uh, season of this kind of drop of this kind of tackle. But I mean, when you're a smaller guy and you're trying to take down, let's say, let's say an Amik Robertson is trying to take down a like this, like a tight end or a a you know a big running back. I mean, how was he supposed to do so? I get I get the um I get the rule that they you know the TO rule. The uh, horse collar, because you know, you're grabbing the jersey from the back, you're grabbing the pads from the back and pulling them down. I get that part. Okay, I, I accept that one. But how do you? How are you supposed to judge a tackle? The guy's running across, like on that play, he was coming across the field at an angle, you know, angle tackling, and he has to shift his momentum a certain way to be able to stop the the runner, the ball carrier. And bring him down. Like how? How do you? How do you? I guess. How do you officiate that? No, I, I and I agree. I mean that that's going to be the hard part. Not to mention, and I'm not trying to be an asshole about this shit, you know. But these guys get paid a lot of money to play this game. They know what they're walking into when they <laughs> play this game. They know injuries are going to be a part of the game. I get lowering the helmet. I get defenseless receivers. We talked about uh, what the hell was it? God damn it! I had it until I started talking about the other damn plays. Uh, oh, son of a bitch! Anyways, it'll come back. You know, uh, I understand. You know, all those and trying to protect the player, but you get paid. Oh, I know where I was going. We talked about it earlier about that player when CTE came out as a thing. There was that 49er player who was in his second year that decided, I'm going to retire. This is real. For the safety sake of my health, I'm not going to play the game. And that's his right. And I don't blame him at all. These players have this choice. They do this to make the money. I understand that. Make your money. Do what you have to do. You get stronger, you get better. You, you know, you get better. There, you know, you got to learn how to do this shit. Oh, see there, Chris Borland. See, I... Didn't remember the name, but, uh, you know, but the thing is, you have the choice to play for as long as you want. You know there's a chance of, I mean, what was it? In the Super Bowl, a motherfucker tore his Achilles running out on the field. So now what? We're not going to be able to run out on the field? Greenlaw, yeah. Right? I mean, there... you know, in this, there's going to be some things. The legs are going to be felt, falled on. When it comes to tackling, these guys are getting bigger and stronger. So they got to find different ways of bringing them down because you can't just fucking lower yourself and just blow them up. Yeah. 
you know, and this is a good this is a good point right here. Participating in drop tackling isn't a choice. It, it, it's a it's like a survival move. You're you're trying to bring him down. You just came across the field, and this guy's running full speed. You know, straight north and south, full speed. You're coming down the field, east west, and you're just trying to get him down. It's not a it, you're there's no malicious intent there, like a face mask, like a blatant face mask. You know, you can say, okay, there's some, you know, malice to that because you felt the face mask, you got to let it go. A horse, horse collar. collar. You already know yeah. not to grab up top, but you're coming, you're hitting them in the middle. You're hitting them in the middle, like in the, in the, the lower, like in the hip area. You know, that's like the safest. It's not the head and it's not the legs, but he's going to come down and you're going to come down with him. And like you said, yeah, it's like the Tom Brady rule. Um, when the guy got, I think he got blocked into Tom Brady and knocked yeah. Tom Brady down, and he was out for the rest of the season with the uh, ACL. It's like, how do you? And we... then, they, then they come up with the Tom Brady rule where you can't even fall near, you know. It wasn't the guy's fault. It wasn't like he was trying to go. Now, the one play I think needs to be done with in this is that corkscrew tackle when they grab the legs and do that twist. Oh yeah, that's fucked up knees and ankles. That that um, type of tackle, I think you could make a rule for and get away with. Because to me, I think there is some malice in that play. You're trying to twist an ankle, twist a knee to get the player out of the game. To me, there's a little bit more malice when you you know when you have them and you just do that. You know, I I call it the uh, dragon screw fucking tackle. You know, a little wrestling <laughs> term there. You know. Uh, you know, I I, I believe there, that you can go for. But this here is going to be ugly. This is going to be, you know, this is Tuck Rule 2024 right here, I think. It's going to be one of those things that screws teams left and right. And who's going to benefit for it? The Chiefs. The Chiefs. Going for their three-peat. I mean, and this is probably one of those things where, like you said, like, like a – um. Con and, well, we're going to talk about that later because that's one of the rule changes they had made. But kind of like when they were trying to figure out what is considered um, rough from the passer, it would be like like barely hitting the guy and, oh, it's rough from the passer. Throw the flag. It's you're, you're, you're adding more, and I know that's what the referees are for, and referees before there was, uh, um, before there was replay, uh, 70s and 80s, the referees had to make every call, but there wasn't as many rules and as many, like, they have to judge technique now. And it's like, how do you, now, now how do you teach, how do you teach players to tackle when you basically are telling them, okay, you got to tackle the guy, but don't let gravity get you a flag. Yeah, no, basically. Newton's law, I mean Newton's law. <laughs> Sense. You, you, you know what's going to start happening, and there's going to be flags on this too. You're going to start getting more Jack Tatum hits. You're going to get people blown up because that's the only thing they can do. And then you're going to get these bigger guys who could just bounce off that shit and turn that what could have been a you know tackle into another twenty yard gain after contact. You know, and and watch this. Watch this rule. Um, cause more injuries. Because guys are thinking too much on how what I can't do, you're gonna lock yourself up trying to not do your natural, okay. not allowing your body to natural. I could agree with that. Look at that guy who got hurt trying not to pancake Derek Carr. He blew out his fucking uh, what was it, a knee or some shit, because he didn't want to get penalized, hurt himself for the rest of the season. And Carr even said, "I'd rather him pancake me. I'm taking harder hits than that." Yeah, because because yes. what he was trying to do was avoid getting penalized for a stupid call because he fell on top of the fucking quarterback. And I and you know, there. and you know, it's 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 all these rule changes. And yeah, I I get player safety and everything, and I agree with you also on when you play football, you understand the risk you're taking to play this sport. It's not a contact sport; it's a collision sport. You are guaranteed to walk off that field with some kind of bruise, bruises, banged up, dislocation, uh, um, broken you know, fingers, fucking maybe a broken a hyperextension, arm. Hyperextension, you know, 
that's that's what football is. But is it is it like, or I have I'm making two points here, but the NFL so that they make these rules not just for player safety, but it's more because they don't want star players to get injured early in the season. Now they can't make that. You know, NFL can't make money on these faces or these names because they're not playing. Tom Brady got knocked out of the season in like in the first like first series of of that season when he got uh, knocked out with the ACL. So they made a rule. To had that um you know when he got uh, tackled the horse collar when he was with the Eagles early in that season they made a rule. He did come back and play in the Super Bowl. Oh, it could have been MVP if, if the Eagles won that game, but they made that a rule. Um, Aaron Rodgers, you can't drop back more than four steps because you know <laughs> they're gonna throw they're gonna throw a flag on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, or, or, or flag. You know, if you're coming off the sideline, you can't fucking sprint to get out there. You can't have fucking energy and shit. You have to gingerly walk until you get past the white line, so you don't sit fall and tear your Achilles. <laughs> you're endangering yourself. And, and, and okay, and then my second point was gonna be this, like, like. It's like sports like boxing and UFC, those kind of sports. Hockey. hockey. They don't have pen- – well, I don't I don't really watch hockey like that, but they still allow them to fight. They still allow them to oh, throw yeah. punches. They, 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 they got penalties for some things, but you got checking. These motherfuckers are checked harder in fucking into glass. Pets the glass. only The only thing they can do is raise your stick and smack the other guy in the head. Or take the skate off and fucking hit. Yeah, yeah, with, you know. yeah. You can't. You you can't That's do the like Happy Gilmore. Rule. You can't do the Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah. I mean, other than that, I mean, they're and and it's funny because they'll drop their gloves. And that's a sign that they're about to fight. And what do the refs do? They back off and let them fight. Yeah, they, they turn into boxing refs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, da, 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 okay, now you guys got to break it up. And the guys are coming out bloodied and yeah. fucking, you know, needing stitches and shit like that. And like and, I said, and, when they get checked, dude, you see, watch hockey and you'll see how hard some of these guys get hit into a fucking plexiglass. You know, and I mean, that's just that, that, that reminds me, some of those remind me of a Jack Tatum hit. You know, it's a car crash. That, the NHL doesn't exist in the court of public opinion. The NFL will continue to soften the game up until they stretch the season to 20 games. That that's That makes sense. NHL, even though it's considered one of the four major sports, football, baseball, basketball, and hockey, it doesn't get as much popularity as the other three. And the fail is top, then basketball, then baseball, and then NHL uh, on the totem pole. But when they get into fights in the NHL, do they get ejected? No. Two-minute penalty. Get in the box. Yeah. And right, when I, right when I go hit zero, they sprint right out. And, I mean, and I know it's – I don't know if, if, if that's apples and oranges, but – it's just the game. Would you consider the game getting soft or the game going getting safe? Football, I think it's starting to go soft. I mean, truly, it's soft. It's slowly and sturdy. Everyone jokes about it, but think about it. In 10, 15 more years, what's it going to be? Flag football? You know, the LFL, them girls hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they barely wear anything. <laughs> them girls hit. Oh, they! they now you, you want to talk about malice? Them girls try to hurt each other. I mean, the estrogen seems stronger than the steroid. I mean, or the the uh, testosterone, because uh, they they hit, and they don't just hit; like they hit how they used to be back in the in the uh, the old uh, NFL. Back in the Al Davis days. Back in, well, back in the, uh, yeah, Al Davis days, but back in the uh, John Madden, bad boys, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, nomads land, Soul Patrol back then. And it said it right there. Them girls hit harder than the guys do sometimes. <laughs> I'm not even going to <laughs> They deplete <clears throat> each other. Fuck. So, yeah, this is... Um, I mean, you know, 
and 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 I get like this isn't a sideline. That's that's clearly. Well, and, and you look at the way he kicked out and coming down on the legs. I think this one here, the guy was he, he got spun around because of momentum and the runner changed directions. You know, on there, it was just that it just happened. You know, here I'm not seeing some of these that are possibly going to be, and all we could do is speculate until we start seeing what is being called. And unfortunately, because of this, you know there's going to be a shit ton of the calls this year. A yeah. shit ton. <clears throat> you know, here you can see him <gasps> kick his hips out, you know, and, and put his... If he would have just dropped straight down instead of doing what we did on, on that on that Niner Cowboy one, yeah. probably could get away with being okay. But the fact that he kicked his hips, you know, to go the other way to try to change momentum to pull him back and the way he landed, I see that's what they're trying to aim for. But in real time, a lot of the fucking tackles are going to look like that. So is that, that and here's another thing: is that penalty going to be challengeable? If it's called, that should be something going too, because they should make it challengeable. Because if they're going to call it a lot, there should be a way to say, no, that was clearly not. It's not going to affect the game. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, allow that to be challenged, you know, a coach be able to challenge that. Well, at the Orlando meetings, AP was asked about this rule and him being a former player linebacker for the giants here's what he had or at the giants and the redskins here's what he or the commanders it's redskins you said it right <laughs> here's what he had to say when it asked about it there's a wide degree of uh, disagreement on this hip, the, the hip drop <laughs> tackle um that role is going to be coming up it sounds like uh, the, the, today i think what's your view on, on on that technique yeah well i don't want i don't think it's a technique i'm a former player i think that you try to get a guy down you know, I think there's a thousand ways to get to tackle. I don't think there's one right way. Certain players, you know, they don't have the physical strength to take down a 240 pound man or 220 pound running back. So um, I don't think it's being taught, to be honest. I think it's just something that's, you know, when you look at the way the game is played, it's such a horizontal game, the angles. You know, we talked about it yesterday in that meeting. It's four, I think it said 40,000 plays on the season, and that play showed up around 250 times. So you're not talking about something that happens as often as we're talking about. but. The disappointing part about it when it does happen, an injury, you know, right? You're talking high ankle sprains, fractures, MCLs, ACLs, the knees. So, you know, anything that you can do to protect the player and player safety, safety I'm all for. But I don't think it's being taught. I'll stay away from that. He's saying is that's not a technique that is being taught to tackle. It's a like, um, like 50 well, said, it's, it's well, not a, like it's, it's like a survival move. Well, it's like you said. It's the angles. He says it's a yeah. very horizontal game. And with the angles coming, it's just a result of one person running at one angle, another one coming at the other angle. And when they meet, you know, and that collision happens, bodies fly in certain directions, and it's just shit that happens. He said 40, what did he say, 44,000 fucking plays? And it only come up 200 times? Yeah. What's that percentage? Do we have to do core math again? Oh my god. 36 episodes plus 46. <laughs> uh, I mean it's a small percentage, I guess, but so would you well, think I, okay? I, I'm here. Hold on. <laughs> We're gonna do you know, average I'm rounding up. about so, you know not four hundred thousand. All right, what's what did it say? Two eighty, we'll say two eighty six, right? Yeah, I'm around there. No, oh, god damn it. Brought to you by the letter A for <laughs> AP. Antonio Pierce, our new head coach at the meetings, telling us how it is to be a linebacker in the olden days of 20 years. Zero zero six five percent. That is a very high percent if you're an alcoholic. What is it again? No, point zero zero six five. Okay, never mind. Then that then you can drive then. That's just a Zima. That's just a Zima. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean that yeah, I mean, I get and, and I, I'm all for protecting the players, but I see this happening at key junctures of a game and in affecting a game. And that could be a game that keeps somebody in and out of the playoffs, goes uh, you know, to the next to the next thing. 
uh, you know, in the playoffs and or might win or lose the Super Bowl. So here's Especially a good question. Considering, considering it's a defensive uh, penalty and a game cannot end on a defensive penalty. So, so who you're does saying that it help? Patrick fucking Mahomes. <laughs> so if this penalty <laughs> happened 25 years ago, 1999, actually, no, 19, no, 2000 was the Ravens, 1999, 1998, 99, 2001, 2000. Wait, Rams? And then they, they tuck rule? Oh, I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't know, whatever. If this happened 25 years ago, that was 1999, yeah. 25 years ago, yeah, Mike Jones makes the tackle on Dyson, spins him around one yard short. 15-yard uh, penalty, new, it's, it's a 15 penalty, new set of downs, you know, so it's it's first. And they're, what, on the one-yard line anyways with another chance what, to fucking get it in? With no one chance to get it in. One play, no time. This is like that Thursday game, Raiders and Chiefs. Did it four when times. You have to t- yeah, many times <laughs> just to get one touchdown. So That, that, that was pre-Patrick Mahomes, so... You know, they did get penalties thrown on them every once in a while. Yeah. Thank you, Alex Smith, for being the quarterback during that time. Sorry. Because if Patrick Mahomes was in there, they would have not thrown any of those flags. Uh, yeah. So are you saying this then? Here's a good question right here. That that tackle, the one we were talking, this one right here, that started this uh, brush fire, is this considered – an overreaction or a tackle that was long overdue to be reviewed and I guess looked upon to be banned. I mean, he's sliding there. I don't see a hip drop. I think it's an overreaction to that play right there. Overreaction. Now, granted, we don't know in the meetings what other plays they showed. I'm sure they showed plays, you know, to, to, to swing the vote because it was a unanimous vote. Mm-hmm. That means every owner voted for this. What other plays were shown? But we do know that specific play is the one that was talked about since it since what well, Four months since ago. the season ended and leading up to this. You know that was the biggest play. That play there. It, just using that play as your example, I say overreaction. Overreaction, I believe. It's an overreaction because, I mean, yeah, players are going to get hurt. That's that's what's going to happen. Running backs are going to get hurt running up the middle, running up the, you know, into the pile of 300-pound men, offensive, defensive tackles. I'm mean, sorry, offensive, defensive linemen. That's, that's the name of the game. That's what they signed up for. That's what they get paid we, we a lot of money. Two plays. That players got hurt and they weren't even fucking touched. One at the beginning <laughs> of the season, first game of the season, and one at the last game of the season. You this know, is our and net. they weren't even yeah. touched. So, I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to have to say we can't play on grass. We can't on AstroTurf, which they've been trying to get AstroTurf out. We can't play in cleats. We can't play on this. We can't paint the field. We, uh, I mean, oh yeah, can't paint the field. It's too slick. <laughs> you know, I mean, what's fucking next? It, it's turning shit like this is what's turning into flag football. And I swear to God, if it turns into flag football, start pay, paying these players less. Stop giving out these hundred million dollar contracts. And, you know, have these players be held responsible for, you know, not held responsible. How are these players playing the, you know, being paid for the game that they're playing? Do you know? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, hey, get, get away. Uh, sorry. My <laughs> cat over here almost stepped on the power. Um, God damn it, you, Blazer. I know, Blazer. Come on, man. Do, okay. Do you think, I, and, and I think I've seen articles about that, that the old school football players, the old school the ones where there was no rules. Do you when think back, back when they played with leather helmets? Bet, oh no, that's too far. If they're still alive, then hey, hold on. 
You want to talk about CTE? That's C T W E E. I don't know. Um, like like back in the day, kind of let, let's say like the Ted Hendricks, you know, guys okay. like that, or maybe like the Howie Longs. Okay, when they were yeah, starting yeah. to change the rules a little bit, like I know a lot of them probably don't like because it's like you're you're taking you're taking away, and, and it was said earlier in the comments, you're taking away the defense because you want the offense. You know, they say uh, offense. Offense uh, brings seats, brings a uh, butt to the seats. Defense wins games, more, and then they, they well, they, they they want more excitement, and I understand that to an extent. But isn't that what defensive and offensive coordinators are for? To to be able to, you know, what what happened to the 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 matching of minds, not matching of minds, but you know, the meeting of minds, having t- players or, or coaches having to out coach the other guy. What happened to players who have a strength of, you know, you got run blockers on the offensive line and you got run stuffers on the defensive side of the line. You you know, yeah. a lot of these rules that are coming out affect the defense and not the offense. And I did read a story, hear a story, whatever it was. I might have heard, uh, heard it where there was a defensive player asking people, why are we being targeted? They feel like the defense is being targeted with all these new rules. Where are the rules? For you know, uh, the offense, yeah. I mean, the, there's only one rule really against the offense, and uh, and that's the offense line that's the high low block. Yeah. You can't engage a guy upward if he's already engaged, uh, downward, and vice versa. That's really the only rule, the only unnecessary roughness rule that an offensive has. They have the crack, they have the, no, the, the crack chip back, blocking too. chip blocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's that, but that the crack back block, crack back. You know, then you also have, you know, which that it affected the Raiders more than it did other teams. A running back can't drop his helmet, but you know, his instinct when he's going into a pile is to fucking get low. <laughs> We're you trying know? to prevent you from injuring yourself. Right. Yeah. What, what, what's the one? What's the run rule? The minute a quarterback takes off, he's a running back. But heaven forbid you hit him like a running back. It's a personal foul, roughing the fucking passer. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, football is a violent game. It is. And if they're getting paid to play a violent game, I mean. I'll be honest. Give me a hundred million dollars. You go out there and fucking break every bone I got in my body. I don't fucking be coming back every goddamn time. I know what I'm getting into when I go in there. I remember a time you want brought you brought up boxing, right? There was a yeah. thing when you go spend a round in the ring for a million dollars, one round with Mike Tyson. Fuck yeah, I'll probably get my ass knocked the fuck out. But you know what? I made me a million dollars. But I knew what I was getting into, and whatever damage happened to my face, my brain, whatever, I ain't going to go in there and blame Mike Tyson for the shit. I knew what I was getting into. I shouldn't have been in the ring with Mike Tyson. I was looking at the money. <laughs> but you know what? For that kind of money, I wanted to take the risk of coming out going, da, 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 da. That was fun. <laughs> where are my money? Where are my money? Yeah, yeah where my money? What, 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 what today, what, what is, what is, what day is it today? Uh, Sunday day. Uh, yeah, he's good. All right, <laughs> Sunday. <Sunderday. laughs> oh, the eleven D. What time is it? It's eleven D. Okay. Uh, but where's my money? Where's my money? Yeah, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. But like I said, you know, and, and like you said, boxers, UFC fighters, they know the risk that they get and the money they make in their mind makes up for any risk that could happen. Yeah. And when it happens, and we've seen some nasty shit. Uh, Anderson Silva broke his fucking shin kicking somebody. He did it himself. He was nasty as hell. But does he go blame UFC? Does he go blame fucking that, the fighter he was fighting? No. He knew the risk of what was going to happen. And unfortunately, it happened. Oh, breaking news! UFC decides to uh, uh, ban kicking 
um, and mixed martial arts. Uh, so it'll be a new form of boxing just without kicking. Oh, it's boxing. Oh, okay. It's a different sport. I'm just joking. No breaking news. All right. Okay. That's ding, 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 ding. It's over. It's over. Overreaction. A court of law in the cage match. In the cage match, no holds barred. Well, yeah, and we'll go. I'd like to know what, what what our viewers have to say about it too. Now, oh, yeah. the ones that are you know that are watching now, and ones who watch later, you know, comment later. Do comment you do later. they think it's an overreaction? Do you think that the Tatlin rule was an overreaction? Yeah, what do you think it is? Oh my god! Okay, <clears throat> from one. Okay, you are we ready for the next one? Here we go. Yeah, from one yeah. Super Bowl. The from one Super Bowl <laughs> highlight. To another, here we go. Well, Jim, a lot of teams, when they play the Colts, they like to defer just so they don't have to face this situation where Peyton Manning gets the football in the second half after he's gone in and looked at all those pictures you see him looking at uh, every time he comes off the field. Onside kick to start the second half, and the ball bounces off the hands of the Colts. And it looked like the Saints had it for a second. How about this way to start the second half? Are you and the Saints football. They recover the onside kick. The element of surprise when it comes to kickoff. The onside kick. You remember this Super Bowl right here? This is when the Saints coming out in second half had the onside kick to get the ball back to defer because they couldn't defer, I guess, because, of course, Peyton Manning was supposed to get the ball back, and the, and the Colts were winning that game. Yeah, I believe, Sean yeah, Payton, I believe the Saints were losing. Sean Payton calls for the surprise onside kick, jumps off of Hank Baskett's shoulder pads. You remember Kendra? Kendra Wilkins. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that was next one. Uh, the playgirl. Anyways, um. We got that right. Oh, no, we don't. Never mind. Sorry. We got no, we don't have that one. We don't have that one there. Yeah, I'm not allowed to have that right there. Anyways, um, the element of surprise is now taken out because of the risk of concussions, which makes sense with the traditional old school kickoff. When one team gets the head start, remember that? The kicker runs and they get the head start and then the ball kicks. You just got to make sure that you're not over the line of scrimmage or, or over the ball line of scrimmage. When that ball is kicked, and then they change it to let the kicker kick it, and then everybody else can go. But then also, you know, a lot of fair catches last year. They called it an unceremonial play in football, but they were just they were thinking of let's just start the game on the or start the the new series on the twenty five yard line because that's basically what we're doing. It's a waste of play. But now the NFL decided to use. You ready for this? Decided to use a page from the XFL, and they're gonna do it like this: two men line up and get ready for. Oh wait, you know what? I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. This is the coin toss. You know when I heard that they were using XFL rules, I thought they were gonna go old school to the one original season of the XFL under Vince McMahon, and they were gonna do one man, fast man versus other fast man. Going down to the 50 yard line. And then, but this is the coin toss. This is who gets possession. Who misses this? We should bring that to the NFL, don't you think? Yeah, I kind of like coin that, toss. You know, that the play, the team with players like fucking uh, Tyreek Hill, Trey Tucker, who's got them fast, mother. Now 40 times are going to fucking matter. <laughs> that was going to matter. The, you got. <laughs> the gunner becomes the runner in the NFL slash XFL. Come this fall on Fox or CBS or ESPN or ABC or whatever show or Peacock channel, or Peacock because we're going to start streaming things and you're going to pay for flag football. That's how it's going to be in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Anyways, this is I'm going to do the virtual and then you're going to do the live. Here we go. This is how the NFL is going to do the kickoffs this coming fall. That right there is your traditional lineup. You see right there on the left-hand side, that's a kickoff. And over here on the right-hand side is a, is a return team. But now they're going to move it up to the five, with the five-yard, kind of like the little oh, area, right that. there between the 35 and the 30-yard 30. 40, uh, line. Now with this rule, there is no running start. Everyone stays. 
the kicker has to basically pooch kick it into the landing zone. And once that ball is caught or hits the ground in the landing zone, hits the ground in the landing zone, then everybody else can go and move. Now, Asylum, I will let you uh, um, elaborate on this. John Madden, yes, John Madden, <laughs> the live version. Boom, and then boom, hey, here we go. Wait, 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 where's my teleprompter where I can draw the circles and? Okay, and, are you ready? Oh, I don't have one of those. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, well, you gonna? We're gonna use our imagination, SpongeBob. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. So, <laughs> Coach Asylum. Oh, well. <laughs> Coach Asylum, tell us how it goes in live action right here. Okay, so what's going to happen? Like you said, they're going to line up. The kicker is going to kick it off from the 30-yard line. Now, that box, if the ball lands in that box or the player touches it, he has to run it back. There is no if, ands, or buts. He has to run it back. Nobody else can move until one of those things happens. But they're a lot closer. You know, uh, there's also the rule, if the ball hits the ground before the box, it starts on the 40-yard line. If it goes in the box, and rolls out of the end zone. They start on the 30-yard line. If it uh, goes into the end zone, the player, uh, the kick, uh, the receiving team can return it or down it, and it goes to the uh, 20-yard line. Look at these rules. Look at the description of the new kickoff format. XFL style, baby. But if it goes out of bounds... If it goes straight all the way out, it goes to the 35. So now that big leg kicker you have is being taken out of the game, really. Now you don't need a big leg. No. You know, those the punters, punter can do it. Yeah, in, in all reality. Uh, you know, and to an extent, I kind of like this rule. It is, it brings back the kick returner. He is now somebody who could be a value player. You know, a Renfro is going to is going to thrive in this kind of a rule. Bring him back. You know, especially with the fact that if it hits the ground or the guy gets it within that and, and that twenty yard or that box starts at the goal line to the twenty yard line. So all you got to do is dump it in there, and he has to return the ball. It's going to cut down on the concussions, and it's going to add some excitement especially when you got a kick returner a specialist kick returner who knows what he's doing and can maneuver and break uh tackles and go but i i like i said i, I this is going to make it make things a little interesting and there's going to be a lot of referees having to explain what's going on at first because <laughs> of where the ball is going to go but you know, if it goes out of bounds or it hits it before that 20 yard line, <laughs> the play is dead automatically. Oh my God. Look at <laughs> Devin Hester, automatically the GOAT. He, oh, this would have got him no, okay. first ballot Hall of Fame. Right now, currently, Cordell Patterson. And he went to the Steelers. They're getting ready for that. Cordell Patterson. He's going to have a field day X -Rater. with this. It brings back the kick returner, which I think <laughs> is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. I think a Hunter Renfro will benefit from this. You're going to get guys who are on the team. You got a punter. You got a kicker. You got a long snapper. And now you're going to have a kick returner. And that's their Bring only the special job. teams back. David Michael, a.k.a. the Puppet Master, 30-yard or 40 if the ball gets chocolate on it, 20-yard line if someone blows their nose, 50-yard line if they didn't wipe their... <laughs> Ay, little ass boy. Do I have it right? <laughs> I'll say their ass. Ah, yes. And then this is right here. Speaking of, we were talking about the surprise uh, onside kick. Teams have oh, to yeah. declare. Oh, uh, yeah. Now teams have to declare... <laughs> That they're going to do an onside kick. And now I think this is the fucked up part. And this is where it goes back to your video. You cannot do an onside kick until the fourth quarter. Onside kicks are only allowed in the fourth quarter. 
<laughs> this is very interesting. And, Let's and, look at and examples. Like Devin Hester. Devin Hester might try to come out of retirement because he's like, I can still do this shit. Well, let's look at examples of how the XFL does their kickoffs. Now, right here, look, this is actually a stop right here. Now, see, they say that this is going to, uh, you know, uh, special team coach, uh, special team coordinators will get the chance to be creative. Like this play, is this one of the plays right here? He gets it, and then he goes, yeah, he it back right there. And then remember that with Terry Kirby back in the day yeah. when he was in the Raiders for that one, two seasons, when they would do that, they, they would do the, um, the, the uh reverse right that i missed a, i missed that play terry kirby and i think the other one was either randy jordan uh, randy jordan randy jordan or um was it buchanan back there at that time the rookie Lamar? buchanan gordon no 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 gordon i think was already off the oh, team gordon, I, think, gordon. I thought i heard jordan sorry my bad no 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 randy jordan the running back i get it Number 28. Okay. I, 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 I thought Jordan, no. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, Randy Jordan. There's there's Randy Jordan. He was the third. The, the, he was like that third down passing back. And then there's Lamont Jordan, who was garbage. He did not do the number 34 justice when he came from the Jets. As, we, already, um, we already said this, Puppet. We, we're saying 15 years from now is, is when the flags come out. For flag football. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? That's why the NFL started in the NFL, uh, was it NFL 60, whatever? Oh, no, the NFL 360. They're teaching the kids how to play flag football. So when they get to pros, they already know the rules. They're already prepared. They're already prepared. Like you know? ball, right? It's like dodgeball. Got to know the rules. Dodge, dodge. Got to know the rules. <laughs> D dodge, yeah, and, do and dodge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, patch. Uh, what's <laughs> patches? Uh, oh, hold hand. <laughs> Rest in peace. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. If you can dodge <laughs> on the freeway, <laughs> if you can dodge traffic, you can dodge a ball. Now, the like this rule. Okay, so the kickoff rule. Now we do remember last year or this past season. Like I said. A lot of fair catches. It was just kind of like Last they wouldn't year. even try. You'll see the returner. He'll just be like, I got to tell everybody else. I let it go. Well, that's a because back. a lot of these kickers have big legs. Yeah. A lot of these kickers and then, have and then big they, legs. They move, they, move the, um, they move the kickoff, you know, Close further feet, out yeah. or towards the middle of the, of the uh, towards uh, uh, pit the yard line. I like to see how that, this rule works in my eye. <laughs> yeah, hang time. You know, no, it wouldn't even yeah, matter. Yeah. Hang time. It wouldn't even matter. Hang time wouldn't even matter either, because no one can move. They're already there at uh, uh, yeah. right there. It wouldn't even matter. That's so true too. Yeah. Everything does not start when the ball is kicked. Every it's so does fun. that mean when the ball is kicked? Does the time start at the when the ball is kicked or when the ball is received? I'm gonna have to assume oh, when the, the ball, ball hits the feet. ground. I'm gonna have to assume that's when it starts. It says nobody can move. Why should the time start? That's a good question. Oh yeah, see, we're over here like, like NFL. Put us in the meetings. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Gardell. Oh, and by the way, three teams voted against this one. Yeah, Raiders, Niners, and Packers. And it's funny that the Raiders voted against this because they were, uh, uh, when McDaniels, probably the only smart thing he did, or that he know football smart he did, was he took advantage of, what was that kickoff rule that the Raiders did that they eventually banned because of the Raiders just a few years ago? I don't know what, I, I forgot exactly what it was. It was something about how Carlson kicked the ball. It was a rule that I should I should have researched it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. I thought you me. would know. You're you're the guy. You're the. <laughs> we didn't discuss this early. I don't know. I I I didn't get no pre warning in, in, in the pre meeting. Does uh let's see uh does the guys uh Devon uh, Devon are you still on? Can do you know this rule that I'm talking about? When uh it was something that the Raiders did because I didn't understand it at the time. That's why I don't remember it. It was something I don't know if it was the way the Raiders kicked the ball on kickoff. It was some something I don't know if it was like the I don't. It was something that was the way Carlson kicked the ball. Then they ended up um here. We go. So so he was teeing uh, it up too high. I don't know. 
Yeah, it was something because it, it got like a weird spin at the Raiders. I don't know if it was when they were trying to do an onside or what. It doesn't even matter now because onsides are gone, Virch basically. But I just thought that was funny that the Raiders are one of the teams that voted against this one. Um, but because it probably affects Carlson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you're gonna just have. Um, Carlson will only be really use his leg for long field goals, which I guess, you know. But I do believe if that's the case, bring back Renfro. Or maybe oh, even so. DJ Turner might get some uh, you know, get some runs. Or maybe your best friend Carter. Carter. You know, I'll play Carter, I'll be happy. <laughs> Carter, come back. Fuck you. I'll take that. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Carter. All right. Uh <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> these league meetings. I mean, they were they were busy. They were busy, and so the two oh, yeah. main things we're going to see is a judgment call on a hip tackle, a hip drop tackle, and the kickoff. Uh, but you like the kickoff. You like the kickoff. You're well, you're I, in favor I, of this one. It's to an extent, yes. I don't like the fact that there's no. Uh, onside kick at any point. They, I've been saying everything they've done with the kickoffs has taken away the onside kick, and I think the onside kick needs to be brought back. They need to make it so the onside kick can be done because it's a valuable part of the game. But I do like this in the extent, in, in the stent sense. Uh, we're a little start over. I do like this in the sense <laughs> that. Uh, you know, you bring back a kick returner. Uh, you're going to get some excitement on, you know, kickoff again. And the fact that it forces teams to have to, you know, bounce in that 20-yard line. Within the 20-yard line, they have to return it. How many times have hits been made, fumbles, you get the ball back? You know, it, it makes excitement. Either guy's going to break it loose. It's going to be what it is. He gets tackled at the 20, 25, you know, which happens a lot. Or maybe somebody causes that fumble. And, you know, now you've got the ball back. It's going to create some excitement to kick off instead of just making it an automatic. It's kicked. Bring the ball back out to the 30, whatever the fucking rule was at the time that changed, to the 30, 35, whatever, you know, whatever that shit was. It's going to create a little bit of, insight, uh, of excitement and some possibilities, but I don't like other aspects of this rule. Like well, I said, the onside kick, where the ball's going. I think if it goes out of bounds in the end zone and out of bounds, it needs to be a fucking certain spot. We don't need this. One's on the 30, the other's on the 35. If it drops beforehand, <laughs> you know, you get how many kickers, unless they fucking really fuck up the kick, does the ball land before the fucking 20 yard line, unless it's an onside kick. <laughs> Here, how about this one? So, so let's say, um, can it? Okay, you know how on on a kickoff, on a kickoff, not not it's not doesn't it's not on punt. It's only on kickoff return. If you do not, so once the ball is kicked, that ball is live either way. Let's say yeah. the kicker is able to angle kick it away from the the returner and once the ball hits the ground well the off well, the the defenders are they able to get if they get through the line are they able to scoop and score on that one if the guy hasn't touched the ball because in 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 in, in the traditional way doesn't matter if the kicker I mean I'm sorry doesn't matter if the kick returner touches the ball or not he can still uh the defender can still scoop it up and 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 take off and, and or whatever basically scoop and score basically it's only on the kickoff return not on punt punt if a defender touches the ball first the ball is down but on kickoff return he has to at least let the ball go out of bounds or or i mean or not the ball go into the end zone for a touchback or he has to he has to receive that ball because that ball is live once it's in the air 
for both sides. Would that still translate in this new rule? Do we have to go back and watch tapes of XFL to see all the different scenarios that the that this kickoff for this kickoff format? We probably that they will, but with but with a with a guy back there and nobody coming up on him, he has more time. This gives him more time to be able to get. The only way you're going to get anything to go to your benefit is putting spin on the ball, and that way it hits the fucking player, and it you know it. He muffs it. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like how a punter, like our punter knows how to, I guess they call it Aussie rules, where he knows how to kick it a certain way to 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 bounce it, where it hits the one and comes back, you know, like like how they that's have me, those yeah. techniques. Would you rather have the punter do that to try to do the same thing and have two, I guess, two gunners, mean, not really gunners, but but, Two but, quick guys see, on the I, ends. I, I don't see. I don't see that happening on this because nobody could move. That that uh, you know, that happening. The the receiver, the, the guy receiving the kickoff, has time to get that ball, get to that ball. You have to now get there and punch out the ball, or have some kind of a spin on it to where, you know, he, oh, I got this. This is easy, and it slides right through his fucking. <laughs> you know, right through him and shit, and that ball squirted this way. You know, and granted, they're starting at the, what the 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 uh, kicking team starting at the thirty five. By the time that happens, it's going to be a collision at the ball. But most likely, the receiving team is still going to have the ball. I don't see. You know, with what you're talking about going, I don't see unless it's a true fumble. You know, while tackling. The receiving team is going to be able to keep the ball 90% of the time. It's going to be interesting. All of us, you know, you know, Hall of Fame game preseason, you know, it's like it is what it and is. You know, who's the Hall of Fame game? Yeah, Bears and Titans. Texans, I thought. Texans. Texans? Titans. I thought it was Texans. Texans. I think it's Texans. My bad. I knew it started with a T, K. Okay? Whatever. <laughs> so, if this rule was implemented, that was, what, uh, 15 years ago? 2010, 2009 season? That play wouldn't exist, and Peyton Manning has three rings. What? It's crazy how we have examples of these are like Super Bowl game-changing highlights or game-winning highlights as the Mike Jones tackle. And the, and those are going to be banned or are going to be erased. And, or for now, because this is basically a trial run in the season. Oh, it's missing. Yeah, no, no, no. People got to remember, this kickoff rule is only for this season. They are but trying it, it out. It's only for this season. If it works... Then I think they're going to keep it. They might have to vote on it, whatever. This is only for this season, and they're trying it out. This is not a permanent rule as of this season. It's only for the 2024, uh, 2024 season. I just this think it's funny right that – I just think it's funny that two big plays in the Super Bowl that basically help their respective teams win that ring are now banned or erased. All those, all those games are missing. I've got a question for you. Who does this benefit? <laughs> Hold on. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> but look at Kate. All, all, all of the, those Super Bowl highlights are missing because now they're basically banned from the future from now on. All it's missing is John Green on the sideline and the name Redskins. On either sideline, because <laughs> they're all banned from the NFL. That's sad. It is. It is, and like I mean, it's, it's good. It, 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 I mean, I'm I'm gonna put the conspiracy theory out there for all the conspiracy theorists out there. I like this right here. The NFL trying to make sure that the Chiefs three P. Patrick Mahomes is the first one to do it. Well, remember when when, when we were talking on the phone earlier? You know, the Chiefs 
had Snead as their um, you know franchise tag, and then they end up trading him to the Titans. And uh, you were saying, what what was your theory on Snead now oh, with oh, this new team tackle? Everyone keep a count. I want to tally it to, uh, on our show at the end of the season to see how many pass interference calls Snead gets now that he left the tees. He had it. He was the leader while he was on the tees, and we all saw how many pass interference calls were not called when it came to Snead. I called Snead a dirty player in the sense of the only reason he was considered just a, lost a, a, a shutdown corner is because all he would do is pass interference. But it wasn't called because he was on the Chiefs. They got to the point they had to call some of them because, oh, my God, it was just getting blatant. I want to know. We'll, we'll find his number, we'll find the number that he had on the Chiefs, and I'm willing to put money down. He has more this year because he's not playing for the Chiefs. Yeah. And that was the interesting theory that you um, had brought up because it's like, did the Chiefs know that this rule could possibly be implemented? So let's just ship them out. I'm just throwing some random stuff out there. You know, because it's all about the NFL, us as, Ra us as Raider fans, it's all about conspiracy theories, you know? And um, we're good at that. I mean, you don't know. We don't know. But what? I'm telling you. People who watch this show are going to see it and be like, oh, my God, that's what Asylum was fucking talking about. Look at that. He's got five in a goddamn game. Is he going to get benched? The Titans fans are going to end up hating his ass. All he we got him for this? <laughs> but we we got him for this? We'd rather have Marcus Peters than, than fucking Sneed. Oh, Shit. no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Mark, hey, well, you know, Marcus Peters, if he ever plays another game in the NFL, he won't get no uh, uh, hip tackles. He won't get no flags for tackling. No, because he, he was all right. <laughs> he goes, Ole. 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 He the other direction, away from the mm. funny tackle. <laughs> That's called a business oh, decision. I tried. Okay? That's called a business decision. Now, other. Other rule? Are we okay? So, so we're we, you know, I'm not gonna agree or disagree on this rule. I'm just gonna say, let's see what happens. Um, it's gonna be interesting how they, how well, first, how how the players, you know, are they gonna know how to line up, where to line up, how to line up? Is the referee gonna know where to place the ball, how to place the ball, where the guy's supposed to be at? Is it's he gonna outside? be interesting? Is he outside? I don't know. <laughs> His foot is on the line. <laughs> that won't benefit the Chiefs. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, that is it's good. Hey, I'm gonna be watching that Bears Texans game to see how they implement because they're gonna keep showing on the screen. All right, the new league rules are uh, you cannot tackle a player who's running at you, and XFL kickoff rules. There's not even an XFL anymore. It's anymore. It's called the UFL now. X U U X. X U U X X X Y Z. No, I think it's U S U F S L. U S C U F C football, where there's no rules and the cage match, no holds barred. Hey, that's it. That's it. We gotta we gotta be on this fucking rules committee. Yes, we gotta be on there. Okay, what do you uh, uh, what rule do you want to say? Uh, uh, well, I want to make sure that we're allowed to tackle one. Okay, textbook tackling. I get face mask. We won't do face mask. I get horse collar. Yeah, I can't do horse collar. I say the uh, hitting somebody, the quarterback, you know, in the legs. I say if you can judge, if you can judge a quarterback on intent with the tuck rule, you can judge a D tackle on the intent when he's hitting the quarterback in the knees. Oh, and, and another rule I want to add to all that is let fucking receivers and DBs be able to fight it out, hand fight. Oh yeah, bring back the bump and run, just like, just like. Come on, Willie Brown. Willie Brown. I was being <laughs> oh. dramatic. Okay, I'm about to say, come on, old man. I was trying to say, do I want to say old man Willie? Do I want to say Willie Brown? Uh, I'll show respect. Just like no, Willie old Brown. Man, <laughs> that Super Bowl, old man Willie. Old man Willie. He wasn't totally, like totally old man, I tell you that much. 
Oh no, hey, hey, y'all the Vikings bring, are the I thing. I want to bring that back because you know what? I mean, that should be. I mean, that receiver, that, and that's the sad thing. And that's when you got like the Chiefs who couldn't have a receiver to catch <laughs> a fucking cold, you know. And they didn't even have to do that kind of shit. But you need to bring that back. I think DB has as much right to that ball, and there should be hand fighting. You know, I mean, Lynn Swan was soft, and that motherfucker used to hand fight all the time and get catches and do his ballerina bullshit. You know, he just didn't like to get hit. The, yeah, the, the Raiders, they, uh, it's, it's, it's like they played with, with it's like the, they played with a, a, a type of malice. A type of malice. <laughs> I remember that interview. They, they, Other yeah. okay, so well, hey, at least with these rules, they did tweak a little bit with the coaching challenges and everything. You know, we're yeah. talking about the um, we're talking about other rules being able to challenge. Here is one: so the coaches get a third challenge attempt if they win one of their main of their first two. Previously, you had, you to, had to get win both. both of them. Yep. To get the third. What do you think about that one? We're going to go down the list. But what do you think about that one? I don't, you like I it wanna, or dislike it? I, I want to see how this one plays out. I'm not a fan of it right this second. But at the same time, it all depends on what's what you know what they change on being challengeable and shit like that. Because there are what? times that, you know, plays, certain plays, certain penalties, you know, should have been challenged. And because you didn't win the one, you know, this allows coaches to be able to challenge a little bit earlier and uh, not worry about, oh, my God, if I get this wrong, am I going to have one later in the game? All they have to do is win the one. I got that wrong. It's okay. I can still win one more. If I win my next challenge, I got one more when it counts. So I'm going to wait and see how this one goes. I, I don't know if I'm for or against it right now. I mean. Yeah, like you said, the coaches have to, like, really look at the play. Oh, you know, when they do the replay up on the screen and really have to decide. And they have a guy up there in the booth, too, that'll tell them. AP said he has a guy after um, when he went to go make that first challenge in one of his early games as interim. Uh, but I don't I, want, I don't know if that was, like, strategy. But, you know, I, no, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Let's just wait. That's not clear enough for me to throw that flag. That gives them that more security to, to try. Because, okay, well, at least I can get one more. If I can win one more, I can get that sec- basically that first one back. That's basically yeah. what that is. You're getting that, that loss back if you get one more. But, but would you think that having that third option because you got one out of the two right, would that slow the game? With all no, the stoppages, I, I don't think the challenges throw the games. They've gotten they've gotten better at these reviews, and I think that's because they they have uh, people in New York already reviewing the play and talking to the fucking uh, refs and everything. I don't think it's going to slow it down. You know, I mean, it's just one more. I mean, when you think of football, I mean, my mom, you know, used to when talking to my dad. Oh, there's only five minutes left in the game. Is that five minutes or is that football five minutes? That's football <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes that's of football could be 30 minutes, and that's just the 40, way to go. 30 to 45 minutes, yeah, with commercials you know, and all that. Come on, yeah, you know, that's just the way it goes. I don't think it's going to slow it down that much more by doing this. This is just allowing, you know, uh, teams that extra ch- chance, you know, because this becomes more important – when it comes down to two minutes left in the game and everything else, it's it's almost like timeouts. Do timeouts slow down the game? Yes, to an extent. Yeah. But you also have 30-second timeouts. In, and in these reviews, I think a lot of the times, unless it's really close. Unless it's really close. Come back quick. You know, well, it, when it's clear, it's like, okay, no, when they come back, no. It's a first down, you know, whatever the damn thing was being challenged, you know. Uh, you know, it's getting quicker and quicker. They're getting, you know, more technology to help them out. If they get this chip in the football to be able to help out in other things, that's just going to be another thing in there to help. Chip in the football. Oh, they're chip in the players. That. No, not the players. Well, I mean, they're not not all humans, but we're not. That, that's a different kind of show. We're not there yet. We're not going to go into that because we're not going to go into those kind of You know, things. I... It, 
it may slow down a, a smidgen, but I don't think it's when it comes to you know football time, it's it's really not gonna slow it down that much. I like I like I like the smidgen. No, not a smidgen. No, no, you will be good. Well, hey, you know, you won't have to use the challenge flag on these, right? This right here. Replay assistant will now be allowed to correct objectively, meaning Okay, the referee clearly got that wrong. Incorrect for intentional grounding and roughing the passer. Those were main issues last year where you're like, wait a minute, that what that wasn't roughing the passer. He barely touched him. What did he do? Sneeze on him and now we got a fifteen yard penalty? And then the you know, the the intentional grounding, trying to figure out what there was a guy like three yards from him. What do you mean intentional grounding? Now, these ones I guess is kind of like, you know, the um when there's a there's a turnover, they would review it automatically. A, yeah. a scoring play, touchdown, touchdown review, it review it automatically, and yeah, any kind of whatever. So I guess that'll fall into that category. Replay assistant, well, they will decide. Okay, that was clearly not rough in the passser. He barely touched him. They will just you know okay. Uh, well, he was we're gonna blocked into play. him. He tripped and fell. Yeah, you know. <laughs> So we Shit won't like waste that. flags on that. Well, how do you feel about them basically allowing uh, the replay assistant, the man upstairs with the with the video screen, in your video scope, oh, yeah, saying, hey, nah, okay, that was not a pass in the – pass interference. That was not a uh, rough in the passer, or that's not intentional or grounded. How do you feel about an automatic replay on a obviously bad call by a referee? Well, no, I, I like it for this because sometimes there's that whole, you know, especially with the intentional grounding. Was he outside the box? Did it make it to the line? And sometimes it's close. And when you got somebody in that review in the box as things are going, you know, who, who has it on the screen, who can slow it down and actually see it. Because as it's been said, if you watch a show with Captain and Violator, there's Rep Guru, who was a former NFL referee. Show plug. He has he was on the field, and I've heard him say there are angles at these refs when you're on the field that you can't see. It looks like it's a certain, uh, you know, it didn't make the line of scrimmage, or he didn't make it out of the box, or, the you know, the guy slapped the shit out of him in the helmet and everything because the quarterback decided to fucking flop like he was LeBron fucking James, uh, you know, <laughs> and it looks bad. <laughs> And yet you got somebody up in the booth who could review it real quick and say, no, that was not a penalty. Take that back and allow the play to continue the way it was. I actually like that one. Yeah, and it doesn't take away, like, like the, the opposing coach that the flag went against, he doesn't have to use a challenge flag because like, that's an obvious that. one. I didn't think that was challengeable before. No, it wasn't because that's a judgment call. They They... They didn't want to use. They didn't want. They didn't want coaches to challenge judgment calls because it it takes. So I guess the I guess the argument was it takes away the referees like them making the judgment calls. This right here, the game goes way too fast. I'm not gonna, even though you know we're Raider fans and we hate referees. In all, in in, in reality. This game goes by way too fast oh, for them to try to see everything. Hold on, yeah, here we go. No, we don't. <laughs> we like the refs. They're our friends. Ah, I see. <laughs> you know, I wonder. I, I, I wonder what the insurance is for dismemberment for the referees. Anyways, for NFL, I like that I rule. Know. NFL, I know. <laughs> Anyways, I, I like know, that rule. This, this ref opted out, so he gets he gets dismembered all the time. Opted out. I can't afford that on my paycheck because we're only part time refs. <laughs> um, I like that rule. I like that rule. I like that they're trying to get it right. Uh, I guess one of the cons was they were afraid that it's going to slow the game. But if you're going to have somebody up there that can be like, no, 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 real quick, and they're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna pick up the flag, you know, under review, pick okay, up the flag because the they're going to say that's the thing as they're coming up. And, and unless it's a hurry up offense kind of a situation and shit, I don't see it slowing down the game. Because as yeah. they're fucking calling penalty and shit, you got the guy reviewing it right then and there. Yeah. And then there's a call down, he gets the earpiece, 
and you know it goes and it goes okay hold on from the booth that was not a penalty we're taking it back the play continues as it is because it takes time excuse me to move the ball back whatever yards it is and everybody to get up and in the huddle and shit and i bet you that decision could be made in that time by that guy because he's looking it over as soon as that play and that penalty is called I like it. I like it. Next one. Replay review will be allowed so you can throw a flag on this one when there is a clear and obvious visual evidence that the game clock expired before any snap. I know you've seen plays where the quarterback, and it's usually when they're in shotgun, and they're over there, you know, and that clock is zero, and then the ball snapped. You're like, wait, are we counting the milliseconds of that last second in zero? Like, like, how does that ball not consider a, a delay a game? So now, if it's a clear, obvious, hey, wait a minute, that clock was zero before that ball was moved by the center, you can throw the flag on that one because that's, they basically got off a free play. Yeah. You can send them back five yards. What do you think about the, uh, that? But that's a, that th- I believe that's when you have to throw a flag on. What do you think about that one? You, you mean a challenge flag? I think that's play replay review will be allowed. So that means that you have to throw that flag. I'm assuming that's what that means. That the coach has to throw that flag and be like, hey, wait, 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 wait. That's a zero. That's a zero. That's a zero. Well, because there's some replays that are automatic. So this, is this an NFL automatic review? I know we talked earlier on the phone and you were saying something about they're going to have a special ref out there who is nearly watching the clock. And once that clock hits zero, he looks to see if the ball is snapped, and if it isn't, he gets to throw the he gets to say something right there. But if, if the coaches can challenge it when it comes time, key points of the game, I uh, you know, I like I like that because there, yeah, there's a lot of times, there's times that it's called, and you know, under technicalities, you know, it, it was it was the right call, but there's been times that it, yeah, like you said, it hasn't been called. And everyone's all that there was zero, zero, zeros. You know, I mean, even as Raiders fans, how many times have we said, stop the ball, stop the ball, stop the ball. Yeah. And the ball still, you know, the clock hits zeros, and that ball is just getting snapped. The rule is if the clock hits zero, it's a delay of game. And so this is another rule that I think can be beneficial because I mean, I think sometimes some quarterbacks and some teams take advantage of that. And, and try to do it, especially when it comes to trying to run out the clock at the end of the game. When that clock is moving, you know, they'll they'll take that extra half a second to, to go, knowing that they got that leeway when the clock hits zero, as long as the ball is moving right after that, that the refs are going to let that pass. So I'm going to read to you. Um... The proposed change will allow for a replay review when there's a clear and obvious evidence that a clock rally. Okay, so uh, uh, Gene Skeletor, or Skeletor, which I call him, we all remember him. He was Mr. Index Card. Remember that game? Oh, fucking the Index Card. God with with his stupid cowboy. face in the camera. You know? We were just had... making sure that what we thought was right. <laughs> um, I guess so. Evil. So, an example, in 2021, for example, officials may have missed a delay of game call against the Ravens right before Justin Tucker drilled a 66-yard game-winning field goal. And this is what Gene Skeletor said. In this case, the back judge will be looking at the play clock and taking his eyes from the play clock back down to the ball. When he sees zero on the play clock, he will move his head directly down to the football. That snap needs to occur right at that time. Um, so, and then they're going back to an example. More recently, San Francisco 49ers running back Christian McCaffrey scored a touchdown in the 2023 postseason on a play that was awfully close to being a delay of game, though certainly not an obvious miss. So, uh, the, um, the con is more stoppage. The downside to make another play reviewable is that it could lead to more stoppage at the time when some NFL games already seem to drag along slowly. Um, 
Okay, the only games that drag along slowly are when they're one sided, and one team's being blown out. And shit, just keeps, when it's a game going back and forth and everything else. How many times have you fucking gone into halftime saying, "God damn, that game that went by too fast"? When it's going back and forth, I yeah, I I, I call bullshit, bullshit on taking too long on that one. Sorry. The only time is when it's that way is when it's one sided, or you're playing the Chiefs because <laughs> it goes in the Chiefs' favors. <laughs> this is a cheap fashion episode. If anybody hasn't noticed, fuck the Chiefs. <laughs> uh, the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Whatever. Fuck Kermit. He's touching me. Okay. And Travis Swift and the rest Travis of them. Travis Swift. Trailer Swift. <laughs> Out. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. How about this one? Ruling, a, ruling of a passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing a pass are now revo- review, reviewable plays. I like that, too. Because there I were times like- where, like, they'd be real close, and it's like, wait, he was out of bounds. That's Or his think, knee was down. They got some Mahomes rule, too. Yeah, hey, about time. Hey, maybe when it gets off it. Hey, finally. Quarterback is getting dinged for his malpractice. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you want to go back to that whole Stabler one, you know, uh, the sea of hands, everyone goes, oh, his knee. I mean, clearly it wasn't, but, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, if you can review, if it's a reviewable play now, I like that because, you know, there, there's been plenty of times that, you know, it's it's close. It's this, especially out of bounds. Was his toes out? and then. I mean, I've seen, uh, and I'm not. I know I've been bashing the Chiefs on this, but I've seen it plenty of times with Patrick Mahomes, where it looks like he's out of fucking bounds, and he's throwing the ball because it would be a fucking loss, you know, on that shit. And then now that you could review it, we could actually get more detail and be able to, you know, see it instead of them just now. It was an incomplete pass. Let's go ahead and move forward, and then, you know, and since. Third downs and shit like that, you know, 32. Oh, let's go for it on fourth and two instead of being, oh, no, that was a 10-yard loss. Now it's fucking fourth and 12. What are they going to do, punt the ball? You know. And since we have that extra, we have that extra insurance uh, insurance challenge flag, hey, throw it. (laughs) He was out of bounds. Throw it. I don't care. Throw it. Only four seconds left of the game anyway. Shit. Uh, Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Throw it. Other... (laughs) Other rules, other rules, other changes and amendments. The NFL trade deadline moves from week eight to week nine. That is a big change. It went from just under 50% of the season to just over 50% of the season. Yeah. What do you like about that one? Really, I I, I have no opinion on that. I mean. Does it make a difference, really? To me, I don't think it does, but I'm sure for some people it does. You know, uh, but it might help you get, you know, get rid of, a, you know, on bad teams and you're trying to, you know, fire Thank sale, you, it, you know, and, and maybe get get something for a player. This, you know, this might be something that benefits the players more than teams. Uh, you know, on shit. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's true. Every yeah. time we tackle Mahomes the wrong way, we will be called. He's touching me. I'm here. I'm here. Where's my flag? Got my flag. I need a flag. Flag, 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 flag. I have a bet with somebody else, too, about that, about how much more he's going to be calling for fucking penalties and shit. I'm going to keep count this year on how many penalties he calls for since I'm stuck fucking seeing those games more often than I'd like. You're in, was it Chiefs Kingdom? You're in the middle, Kay. I'm in the middle. Hey, I'm that black stain in the middle of Chiefs Kingdom. <laughs> on the black stain yes on the black stain all right next one during a play now this one let, let's break this down a little bit during a play that results in a position change if fouls are committed by both teams so i guess offsetting which offsetting, we used to be yeah. calling it any major offensive fouls an example like unnecessary roughness that were committed before the possession change will now be enforced. 
can you explain exactly what they're saying? Because I'm trying to think of an example of, of uh, okay. like. I, I, I think an example of this, you have unnecessary roughness. Let's say, you know, uh, 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 you have two penalties, you have a holding call on the defense, and then you have a uh, roughing the passer. That okay. roughing the passer is now going to be. Uh, well, no, 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 no. It'd be a holding call on the offense and the roughing the pass on the defense. Yes. Okay. That roughing the passer will now be enforced, which therefore there ain't going to be a, pos a possession change. Or if it does, maybe they move, you know, the change of possession still happens, but because of that roughing the passer, they get moved back 15 yards. Or, yeah, I think roughing the passer is 15 yards. The, the before, okay, so before, if there was offset Before they used to watch. I mean, that, that play never happened. Time. Yeah, we used to see it all the time. A little holding call. When they gate a big, you know, uh, yeah. unnecessary reference call, and it it will yes. be squashed. Now it seems yes. like that bigger call is going to be enforced. Okay, I understand it now. <clears throat> Cause I will happen. You're like, oh, Raiders got an interception, and in. oh, there was a hold on the defense. No, well, actually, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's 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 break this down one more time. So, if so, like on the fourth down play, uh huh. Okay, an incomplete pass. Balls, you know, that's a change of possession. And, yes. You know, change of possession, and you have a bigger unnecessary, you know, roughness, a major foul, and then you got a simple holding foul. Okay. The bigger foul will be enforced. So the team would still get to keep the ball. As of before, it never happened. The play never happened. I don't care if you did a, a pick six. It never happened because you had well, see, a, you had committed. A six, well, see, that doesn't that doesn't work because if it was an interception and there's two offsetting fouls, you replay the down. But there now there's no replay of the down. They're going to enforce one of the they're going to enforce the bigger penalty. So is this a change of possession, like you say, like a like a change of downs, or a actual like or or as turnovers? Does now, a turnover, a turnover count? Could be in there. Turnovers could be in there, but yet it, it depends. It's you know, because it could be there's a turnover. And instead of replaying the down, there was that there, there, there was that uh roughing the passer. So they're going to enforce that, which now gives the first down. So instead of just replaying that play and doing it over, it's getting enforced. They get the first down, and now you're continuing on. Position changed fouls committed by both teams. Any major okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying now. So the, so you don't keep the ball. So the defense don't keep the ball if they got a fumble. It's just that. If I don't know, we, 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 you want to use a tuner or turn over in this? We can. Let's say it's third down, right? Running back fumbles the fucking ball. Yes. Okay. He fumbles the ball. The other team gets it. They score a touchdown. He gets tackled. Whatever it is, but the other team clearly received. You know, got the ball. Okay, yeah, got the possession. They got the possession. Normally. Those are offsetting, so you replay the third down. Yes, and 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 the ball will be be back to the original line of scrimmage the as it was before that. Okay. Now, whichever bigger foul it is, so if the bigger foul is against the offense, you know it's probably just going to be a, a possession. You know, so it, it's so not, it's like you know. we we replay the down, but we add the penalty yards no, to. They're not even going to replay the down because the bigger offense, unnecessary roughness is 15 yards. That's going to be what an are, automatic first down. The one automatic first down? That should be an automatic first down, and the team that fumbled the ball gets the ball back. So because if the if the, first down. if the penalty happened on the offense, let's say it was a high low to a high low block. Um and, and that will get then the ball changes hands and that, that penalty get enforced. 
from the spot of that, you know, wherever he was tackled, it'd get enforced and they'll get that many more yards for it. That's not a key no, no. at all. Huh? <laughs> That's not confusing at all. I like this right here. The NFL is just making it easier for them to call a game whenever they want, meaning we're going to make up the rules as we go along. You know what? We're going to just no, say. Meaning, meaning the reps are going to fucking get to determine the game as much as they want to. The judge. How's it go? The, the, the judge, jury, and executioner are the refs? Yeah. Basically. Which is the. No, that's a penalty. Call it, call it, call it now. <laughs> Raiders, call it. Is he, he was, hey, he's wearing a Raider uniform. Call it. Wait, what? Okay, how about this one? Teams now have an unlimited number of designated to return transactions during the playoffs. So I guess if a guy was injured, but he's designated to return, maybe like that, that, uh, not the, not the, like the minor, the minor uh, injury reserve. Uh, well, yeah, no, uh, I think that what they're trying to refer to there is, uh, you know, you, you're limited to have players to, you know, come back from injury. There, there used to be a number on that shit. I don't remember what it was. I want to say it was four, but I think I'm wrong on that. Uh, He's touching me. He's touching me. Sorry. Don't get him started. He don't need help with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I think when it comes to the playoff teams, episode. you know, because somebody gets hurt and then you make the playoffs and normally they might not be able to come back because you've already used however many throughout the season. They're just saying if you get a healthy guy back for the playoffs, you're allowed to designate him to come back. You like that rule then? I like that rule. Uh, I mean, it's definitely helpful to teams. Yeah. You know, uh, it's been a while since we've been in the playoffs and been able to use something like that, so we'll see. Well, we, we'll use it this year, okay, when we go to the playoffs and dethrone the Chiefs in the AFC West. Oh, yeah. And this one right here, emergency third down. Oh, I'm sorry. Emergency third quarterbacks who are available to play in case the starter and the backup are ejected or injured can now be elevated from both the 53-man roster and the practice squad. Previously, only you were they were only allowed to come from the active 53-man roster. I, you know, they, they have these rules, but I I want more like clarity. I get. Are we talking like? I don't, I mean like like. Does okay. he have to be? Does he have to be on the? Uh, uh, let's say it's a practice squad guy. Let's say it's Garbers. Okay, Garbers is your third string guy. I know he's not on the team. He's not. He's on a, a UFL team right now. But let's just say because he's no, been on our practice no, squad I, for the last. I, couple I got years. a better explanation on this. We'll go back to earlier. Josh McDaniels fucking part of the season when Aiden O'Connell was the third, uh, the emergency quarterback. He had to be on the fifty-three man roster. To declare so third. To be declared that third. Okay. Now, now he can just be on the practice squad and be declared. On game day. Like, so so he can be day, practice yeah. squad up until Saturday, but Sunday morning or Sunday, whatever, Sunday afternoon, you know what? You're going to be my third guy. You're my third quarterback. Yes. Suit up. That, and so basically to me, the way I'm reading, the way I'm understanding this, and I could be completely wrong, but the way I'm interpreting this rule is it, gi it gives you a 54th man. Yeah. You know, you can have your 53-man roster, you got your, your main guys, and you have the other guy on the practice squad. Your third quarterback's on the practice squad because it's just the way shit has worked out. But he can still be declared as your uh, emergency quarterback and dress – so if something happens, they could just say, okay, yeah, he's our 54th, but you still have all your other players. Is this I, going to affect some some people in that aspect? Maybe. Most teams I don't think are going to utilize this because their third person is still going to be on that 53-man roster. 
you're not just going to put somebody on the practice squad. What happens okay. when they're on the practice squad? Okay. They can be took by another team. I see what you're – I get it. I was going to say this rule seems very redu- – okay. I see what you're saying. So, meaning, like you said, you have an extra 54th man. So, that 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 roster spot that you have for that third quarterback can be used, let's say, for a reserve receiver or a reserve D-tackle, something that you might need in the game, but you can elevate somebody from the practice squad to be that third quarterback, emergency quarterback. He can't only he, he can't come in unless the two guy, the two, the starter and the backup cannot return back into the game. Correct. So, so, because so were, you're not wasting, you're not wasting a a roster spot on an inactive man because he still can't come in unless the two guys get hurt. Get, get but, hurt. But but the thing is, if you do it that way, you run the risk of said player being, being taken off your, you know, off your practice squad. So most of the time that third quarterback is going to be on your 53-man roster. That and there, there, there's, that's, that's the catch right there. That's the catch right there. That's what we do over here in the cage match. We find the catches in these rules. Don't try to give me and sell me something that's beneficial. There's a reason why my backup quarterback, my third stringer is in the, on the practice squad. He's still fair game to any other team out there because the player still has the opportunity to, to – to be on a active roster, even though he's on your practice squad, if another team comes calling, he has the just opportunity like to go like on. Into- we took him off the practice squad because we saw him practicing on the field with the Baltimore Col- uh, Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore yeah, Colts. What year are I'm you in? Old school. I'm an old school. I know. I, 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 <laughs> you I, went I, way I, back. <laughs> yeah, but, well, Art Monk. Well, Art Monk. That's the wrong guy. <laughs> Art. Monk, uh, Art. <laughs> Art Monk, the receiver, was the owner of the Baltimore Colts? No. Art Modell. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> you know, so when they're on the practice squad, you know, so you're, you're not necessarily going to keep him on the practice squad. But if something happens and you know a quarterback, you know, your starter is going in with some injuries, he might not be able to make it. Then you have your second stringer, but your wide receiver core is decimated. So you know, you've got that going. You might say, my guy's on the practice squad. That's my emergency quarterback. You know, and for that game, I'm sure, you know, they, they got the rules on when you can take those those players and shit. You know, he's my emergency. <laughs> oh, so, you know, it, it, yeah, it's a little bit of play in there. And, you know, most of the time they're not, it's going to be on the 53-man roster. But they're no. allowing them to be, if they're on the practice squad, that's good enough for your emergency. Because otherwise, you, you got a, a running back that's your quarterback, a wide receiver that's your quarterback, and we've yeah. seen it happen in the NFL. Tim Brown, Tim Brown was that designated guy when Joe Bugle was coaching, and they went four and twelve. Uh, I believe you're four and twelve. Um, yeah, and, and the rule with that is, if a team takes one of your guys off a of practice squad, he automatically must be on your the active roster. roster. Yeah. Because you can't just take a practice squad guy and then put him on your practice squad. You can't do that. He has to be on the active ro- ro- the active roster that following game, week. that following yeah. week. So that is all, that is your information of what's going on in, in the league rules that we're going to be waiting to see this coming off season. Now, also, when you see the Raiders come out in the field, you got to know the numbers that you're going to be seeing out there. We do have the New Jersey numbers of some of these players. Wilkins, of course, will be keeping his number 94 that he had with the Dolphins. Minshew goes back to 15 that he had his rookie year with the Jaguars. Bryant keeps his 84 coming from the Browns, the um, reserve tight end. Madison goes from, I think, number two to 25, which Morg had, and Morg took the number seven, as you see right there. And this Butler is Matthew Butler, the other D tackle. He goes to 91. Which and also, is that is not, that, that is Matthew Butler, okay. not nice. um, Adam Butler. Okay, okay. Because Adam Butler, I think, is 69, right? 
No. No. 96? 96. Okay, see, now. We're now we gotta to look it up. Adam Butler's number. <laughs> but that's that's Matthew Butler. That is Matthew Butler. He is now 91. Because I believe 91. No, because 90 was um was Balao, right? Yes. 90 was Balao, right? I believe so, yes. He was not uh, oh you were right, 69. He was originally 69. You're right. Who? Adam. Adam, yeah. He's 69. He's so 69, Butler, right. the Matthew Butler is 91. So there you go. And if you're curious, the cage match team, we got our own jerseys. <laughs> Asylum, number 77. Me, Savage, 34, because Bo Jackson is my favorite athlete as a Raider playing baseball and football. I played football in high school, and I coached football in high school, and I was an all-star, fast-pitch, slow-pitch softball player. In my own mind, I don't care. A legend catch, in your own mind. Hey, catch my highlights on the Ocho, okay? ESPN Ocho. I won't hear nothing. And we catch got Peggy. Per Peggy's perspective, our number one. She because she, she she's like Epps. She's back there. She's a safety. She hits you too, okay? Oh, Peggy. she hits hard. Hey, she hits hard like Tatum. She could have been thirty-two. She could have been thirty-two, but I made her number one because she was our very number one. Our very first guest, or yeah, our, our very first regular on the show. And then, of course, Raider Man 19, 19, who was also one of our regular special guests that we would, that we would, that we, that we, that we would have on our show. Cause I just have to throw it in there, you know. And a funny story about Peggy, she was supposed to come on to do our first cage match segment. Again, you know, against me about Marcus Peters. She felt a certain way. I felt a certain way. We were supposed to have our first cage match segment. And then the week of that segment, the Raiders decided to cut Marcus Peters. She, won by she still came on. And because of that first time of coming on, she has become a, a, a regular on the show. She has her own slot every other wednesday what so she will be oh my god <laughs> she will be see that's that's the re, that's the um you know the effects of the concussion she put me in her first time she was on the show you what do you think me? savage i <laughs> you got cte ah uh, cte is not real <laughs> according to ab and Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones. I think they were supposed to have their own podcast called CTE, but I think they forgot. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm just, CTE's real. Well, we're not trying to take away from CTE. It's serious, but damn, that was funny. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, Peggy will be here next week for her perspective. And uh, we got to see what we're going to talk about for then. But we're going to start. Well, don't, for, don't forget, also next week, you know, we'll bring uh, we'll bring this back. Yeah, thank you. I you was know, ready. We, <laughs> we'll have Lorenzo Lerma on to talk about his summer kickoff uh, event and to do the drawing for everybody who has shared a summer kickoff flyer. And this is the key part: has tagged either Oakland Raider Savage, Asylum. Or Lorenzo Lerma in said post mm-hmm. for a drawing for two VIP black hole section tickets to his event. Don't want to miss it. Yeah, it will be live on this show. So the winner will be find out. So watch the show in order to find out if you won. As long as you follow the rules and shared this event follow the rules tag us i don't know Oakland go Savage. what the rated rule number one is and follow the rules but this time you gotta follow the rules tag Oakland Raider savage facebook page asylum facebook page or lorenzo lerma's facebook page for you to win two tickets to the black hole section of the 
summer kickoff in Kern County Fairgrounds. I'm reading the bottom. Thank you very much. Little ticker. In Bakersfield, California, May 11th. Get a chance to get uh, be in the black hole uh, uh, VIP section. And and you get tickets at summer kickoff 2024.eventbrite.com. Boom. Right there. Make sure you do so. Because next week, like I saw them said, Lorenzo Lerma will be here to pick himself to pick who will win those two tickets May 11th. The event that kicks off all events of Raider Nation. Basically, your kickoff to the season. And with that, do so. Anyways, <laughs> any other last words, Asylum? No, I just wish football would hurry up and you fucking get here. We are only in March. You have to remind me, don't you? We got the draft coming up, though. We got something. We'll have some some interesting shows coming up on that. So stay tuned. We gotta for get that Demon. Kind of we gotta get. We gotta draft Demon King and put him on the Cage Match Show. He was on here one time, but we need Demon King to come back again, and he will be coming back again because Demon King is our draft expert. Demon King, or I can say Jason Dean the Demon King. Jason Dean the Demon. Jason Dean the Demon King. <laughs> Slow it down. It just it just blows. Yeah. You know. It just flows so much you get tongue tied. It's just, I mean, and you speak in tongues like a demon. Speaking in tongues, <laughs> real girls. Um, with that, we say thank you very much for watching. For those who are watching uh, after the fact on replay, we appreciate you. For what, for those in the comment section, we appreciate you for interacting on the show. I hope you learned a lot. Because we had to learn a lot with all these rule changes, especially the kickoff return one. That's going to be interesting on that um, that uh, um, uh, Hall of Fame game, Bears versus the Texans. My bad. We're in our first view of this said rule. It's going to be Keystone Cops all over the field. That's what I'm betting on. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, we go out. Uh, <clears throat> We go out like we always go out with a word from Coach Wallace, high school, my high school coach, a.k.a. to those in at the Oakland Coliseum tailgates, Raider Milt. We go out like we always go out. With that, we say thank you very much, and thank you for watching the show, and thank you for those who are watching it on syndication. I like to say that as if we are on syndication. You can say stream it whenever you want. With that said, have a good night, Raider Nation. From and I only got one more thing to say to Raider Milk. I'm also undefeated in my cage match. Boom! Boom! All you other NFL teams, your tailgates are weak. Your teams are weak. We might be down right now, but it doesn't take away the history. And all you Raiders out there need to know your fucking history of who the fuck you playing for and where the fuck you're playing. Damn it. Oh, and by the way, I won my last cage fight, again, I'm still undefeated, and you NFL motherfuckers out there that you think you want some, come on and get some, anytime.